Good evening, all. I wrap Stan, and here we are with your Metal Market Wrap-Up. And this wrap-up is for Tuesday, the 29th of August, 2023, just after 5.30 p.m. Central Time. So we get a number today out of the jolts data that shows the amount of turnovers and uh, jobs out there to be had. Now, you got to go back and understand that in 2021, we had only almost 12 million jobs were unfilled. The number's been falling. We recently got through 10 million. And today was uh, another event where you got down to like 8.827 million jobs being offered. In addition, the turnover, people aren't leaving their jobs anywhere near the pace that they used to. It was almost 3% turnover before. Now it's starting to slip away. What did the markets do with it? You saw an explosion because the stock market takes this, that the Fed's got it right. The bonds and notes, well, it depends where you look. Uh, the two-year lost like 12 basis points, and I think it was about 10 for the 10-year, uh, and about um, in the 30-year, about five basis points. But it's acting like the market has gone into a stall. That's very important. The dollar took it right on the chin, down 52 points today. So this is where the dollar loses its embedded reading. And that means a near-term top could be in place, but certainly the upside momentum, unless you have a big up day tomorrow, wanes and you'll be looking with me in a minute to where I think this might go. So that benefits all these markets. In addition, you have China coming out and saying that existing mortgages are going to see a reduction in their interest rate. Hear the word I said, existing mortgages. That puts money back in the economy. Then they're told big banks that they want to reduce the interest that they're paying on deposits with the big banks that the, the banks would pay out to consumers by five to 20 basis points. I didn't get where it's gonna settle in. So what they're really saying to the consumer is, hey, we're gonna let you have some more money because you're not gonna pay as much on your mortgage. But if you keep it in the bank, we're gonna pay you a little less on this. Go out and spend it. That's part of the concept that they're going with. Is it enough? It's a beginning. Let's look at it that way. It's better than doing nothing, but it is clearly not enough in my opinion. And you will see a chorus of countries saying, no, they have to do even more to get things going. Now, when we look at the gold market all week long, I've been saying, in fact, last week, I said, if we get a bounce, the curious part will be on a weekly chart to see what the market does as it approaches the 18 week moving average of closes. Now, remember how weekly charts work. You're taking existing contracts and rolling them one after the other forward. That is how they do it. So this is not the December gold weekly chart. This is the gold weekly chart. And that's why the number's at 1950.10. That is still the resistance point. When we take a look at Dece gold, and I pointed that out because you look at Dece gold and the value is 1965 and yet the resistance is 1950 on the other chart. We were talking that maybe we were forming a trade bottom. I gave you the example, I'll refresh you, that think of this market coming down like that. You pull down a rubber band, you let go, and it snaps. To get a 50% retra retracement, no big deal. Most traders will look for something like that. The market's got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs in an uptrend. The market yesterday and the day before and the day before was fighting where? Well, if you step with me here, you were fighting at the 18-day average of closes, and now you're lifting up. What did I say just yesterday? I said, if the market can go up, one of the resistance points is 1965, which is what average? That is the 200-day average, and where's the Bollinger Band? The Bollinger Band, they said, might drop down to meet it, and that's coming in right now at 1975. So there's your resistance zone. But the good news is the market's made a tradable bottom. So what a lot of traders will do, they'll probably start buying the market at 1943, stops under 1931 to see where the market might go. The problem that those traders are gonna have is this. You had one report today. You're going to be getting Challenger Gray, ADP report, the PCE price indexes are all coming out this week, and then Friday's jobs report. 
Folks, there's so much information in very thin trading markets, it's almost like looking to get hurt in them. I, for one, will be backing off, I can tell you that. I, I look at when I see things like this happen, I get it, I expected it, I told you I thought we'd get a bounce, but when I'm seeing the swing sizes and how they're doing it, it's a bit dangerous, just be careful here. When you look at the market, it's overbought as can be. So I, for one, think the market's gonna have pretty big problems from 1965 to 1975, but again, I don't know that the next reports that come out the rest of the week don't just all of a sudden make this statement. The labor market's turned. The Fed has no reason to keep raising rates because with that turning, there'll be less money in the economy, they can take time to turn, and then the market takes a life of its own. What does it mean to gold? Well, the headwind of gold has been a strong dollar and higher interest rates. If that game is changing, you could open the door up for the 200-day average if any of these reports cause a big spurt in the market. Certainly the short side doesn't look the place to be. In the gold-silver ratio, silver continues to wipe out gold. It just keeps moving higher and higher on it. The chart has been bullish. It's trying to set up the first stages of embedding. It's not there. It's saying to you, hey, come on in and buy the Bollinger Band. Enjoy yourself. You'll never get me doing that. Why? Those are the things that I teach not to do, and this is probably a good spot for me to stop for just a minute and remind you. We have our Labor Day sale, 40% off any of my research that's one year in duration of length, number two, any of the charting, charting course. So as an example, if we come here together, here is the course on the Bo uh, Bollinger Bands, normally $120, it's $70. $2. Come on. If you want an extension to it, because it's good for 30 days, $60 down the road. You, most people don't get an extension. Why? Because they find that the course is so compact, done in such a way, you'll get it. Plus, if you're a subscriber to my research, I'm going over it every morning for you in both the ETFs, a subscriber video and in the futures one. So you get both of that there. How do you get this? Go to irapstein.com. You can move your cursor to the very top up here. You'll see an icon up here, go there. And again, I wanna remind you, it's yearly subscriptions, got that? It is not available to people that already have a yearly subscription with me and wanna renew for another year on top of that. No, take another one of the subscriptions. That's how I want you to do it, all right. So let's go now to the charts and finish up with those, as I said I would. So in the silver, yes, I've got concerns, two things. I don't like when the market makes its first move over a moving average it hasn't been at for a while, the 100-day and the Bollinger Band combination. That doesn't mean it can't go higher. I don't like it, and it's overbought. In the copper market, tell me where the market made its first run. It went to the 18 first here, played around it for three, four days in a row. It's overbought. So it's lifting into the 100 day off the Chinese news. And the next stop could be if the market wants to go higher, but it's overbought. It's wasting a lot of power here to get up here to the 391 level, the 200 day or 387.40, the upper Bollinger Band. I think the market's getting a little bit ahead of itself. Uh, I was looking at COPX on the ETFs and I was telling also some people there that it had lost its embedded reading yesterday, or I think it was yesterday, and today it went right up to the objectives, finished everything off. In the platinum, I wanna go on record with this. I think the market's gonna have big trouble between right here, the 200 to 100 day average. Could it go higher? Sure. Would I tell you to go short? No, the trend is up. Would I tell you, hey, time to lift money off the table if you're long? That is what I'm saying, I guess. In the dollar index, uh-huh, uh-huh, a short-term trading top. Outside day down, if you've not taken the outside day course, here's the position. You just saw what I showed you, irapstein.com, the courses. This is a great time to take one, unless you're gonna take this high out again in the next two days, the odds favor that you just ended Get the word that I just said, ended this leg up, 
Now the market's got to reconstruct whatever that might mean. The first logical objective is to get back to the 103.05 area, the 18-day average of closes. The embedded reading was lost by closing under 79 at this point. So I'm content to tell clients that I was bullish on Time to throw in the towel, take another look at the marketplace. So take advantage of the offerings. Remember, you can move your cursor up here. It'll take you right to the area you need. You have a good trading day, a good evening, and I'll see you in the morning.